Well, hello, Christ Lutheran. Good morning. God's peace to you. Uh, welcome to the Rambling Rev. I got a few things on the mind today that we'll hit on and discuss. Um, blessings is if you're joining us live or if you're watching this a little bit later on, uh, it's kind of the purpose for doing it during lunchtime here so you can kind of catch it throughout the day uh, no matter when you're getting on. Uh, so here I was this past weekend. Um, I was downstate. We were visiting Rebecca's parents and we were just about to leave to get started and I had a member of the congregation send me a text and said, hey, I got a text from you uh, saying that you had were asking for money and things like that. And I was like, yeah, oh, great. Um, you know, it's that time of year, the fraud and everything goes around and they had sent me a screenshot of what it said. And I, it, this stuff kind of, this stuff always kind of floors me, but this time in particular, it made me so mad, um, because they addressed the person by name and, and they did it for everyone else that they texted and they used my name on top of it. And so as I was sitting there, we were just about as a two and a half hour drive to get back up here. And I, I you know, this text just came through and I quickly, I text our office manager, Dana. I said, hey, throw something up on the Facebook page right now because I, you know, this just happened. I'm sure it's going to hit a few other people because it happened last year too to Pastor Darren, which that's a funny story. I'll maybe tell that here in a second. Um, and, and then I had to get going. And so we we're driving up and I could just feel my pocket vibrating the entire way back because I knew that there was people reaching out and messaging me about this. So um, jokes on you, whoever did the, the, the scam, because you got a good, I got a good rambling out of it here today. So that's what we're going to cover here. Some thoughts, theological thoughts, uh, other things that kind of hit me as this kind of happened. Uh, I'll t t maybe tell a couple stories here and there about stuff that I've, I've noticed and noticed, uh, what the reflections, uh, I'll tell that story from pastor Darren here real quick. Uh, it was actually just last year and I was in, in my office here. Pastor Darren was in his office and all of it, and he had his door kind of cracked. He was doing some call or a meeting or something like that. And all of a sudden I got an email from Pastor Darren and it said, Hey, I'm stuck in a meeting. And I, I was just kind of looking like, Oh man, what, what's this meeting going on? I thought it was just a simple, like catching up with somebody or, or something like that. And he's like, I need you to go do something. And I responded to it because it said it was from Pastor Darren. He used his name and, and everything like that. And so I wrote back and said, yeah, what, what's going on? What do you need? And it sent back almost immediately. Yeah, I need some gift cards. Can you go out and get And I knew right away. I was like, oh, because I've seen this stuff before. I'm like, ah, oh, I got suckered in. Uh, and so I replied back to the guy, nice try. And I didn't hear anything else from it and blocked the email and whatnot. But I went into Pastor Darren. I said, so you're stuck in a meeting, huh? And uh, he's like, huh? And we kind of saw what happened and same thing happened to him. Now I got to have it this year. Uh, you know, a couple, just a couple of weeks ago, I was preaching. I, I made this joke on Sunday in church uh, when I gave the announcement for it, uh, just to be a, give a heads up and things like that. And there was somebody who, um, you know, a few, a few weeks ago, I had preached on a topic of idols from First Thessalonians chapter 1 and how God gets mad at idols because idols try to pretend to be God. They try to take credit for what God does. Uh, you get in the Old Testament, you know, in Aaron, they make the golden calves and it, because Moses is up on the mountain. And he says to the people of Israel, behold, here are the gods who brought you up out of Egypt, right? It's fraud. You know, he's claiming that these gods are the ones that did it and not the, the one true God. Uh, and, and I joked at the congregation, I'm like, I understand my own point better now. Cause that's kind of, I've made that same kind of point where God gets mad at these idols who pretend to be him, uh, for this reason. And, uh, yeah, now I get my own point better here. Um, but you know, talking about this, this kind of relates to the eighth commandment. Uh, you know, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor that we shouldn't lie or deceive because it comes down to the point of reputation. That's what, this is what got me mad. And I, I talked to several, you know, several dozen people uh, about this. I was spent all Saturday night talking to them. I was messaging, uh, you know, police and things like that. And I was just trying to get feedback about how I should go about doing things um, and covering my basis and whatnot and, and reaching out to you guys who had been you know, scammed and whatnot, or at least attempted to. And um, a lot of these thoughts are going through my mind with the Eighth Commandment because the Eighth Commandment is all about reputation, a person's name. Uh, you know, a lot, a, a, our reputation, our name, our good name is a gift from God uh, that he uses. And someone had just, that's what made me mad about this, is that someone is trying to take the name of the church, the name of a, you know, the name of a pastor, um, not, you know, not to 
anything special about my name at all, but that my reputation comes with a na- uh, my name comes with a reputation. And when you think about, oh, Pastor Andrew, you have, oh yeah, I have this memory of him or this, and oh yeah, I trust him, or you know, I can't stand a guy or whatever it might be. All right, that's part of my reputation. It comes with my name. So when you even think about my name or your your, your name wherever you go, right? It, precedes you and, and things like that. So when someone gets a text claiming to be Pastor Andrew and uh, and says, hey, I'm asking for money. Well, I was even talking to someone and says, yeah, I, I was like, oh, he, he needs me. And of course, I'm going to help him. He's a pastor and blah, blah, blah. And, and then uh, as, she, as she was going about doing it, she realized too, it was a scam. And like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Um, but someone tried to take my name and falsify it and use it for the, the wrong reasons. To bear false witness is to lie using someone's name. Because uh, name is, uh, and you know, our name is g- given to by God. It's our reputation. It's how we go about doing things. Uh, you know, you sign your name on things. You're you're saying you're going to do it. Uh, this is where cr- line of credit and things like that comes in. Even in the business world, you have to have a good name. Otherwise, they're not going to loan you money and things like that. Uh, so we, the eighth commandment is hugely important, right? That we should not hurt or harm our neighbor. Um, by you know lying or we, we defend him, we speak well of him and explain everything in the kindest way as a small catechism goes about doing it. Which is you know talking about that, uh, I had a lot of people reach out to me. Uh, talk you know talk about good works. Talking about you know what we're called to do as Christians is that part of that what it is the eighth commandment is to defend your neighbor's name, uh, to watch out and protect it. And so part of fulfilling the Eighth Commandment is not just to not lie, refrain from lying or, or giving a bad name to somebody, but it also entails giving, uh, defending them. So when you, uh, uh, yeah, see, yeah, Alex, you're also greatly bothered. Yeah, it's such a dishonest thing to do, right? And it's related to stealing. So to give false uh, witness, you know, is also to steal, um, it murders because it's murdering someone's good name. It's, uh, you know, so talk about breaking all these different commandments, right? All the commandments are synced together as to have a wrong God uh, when you break the commandments. Um, but yeah, but, you know, back to the, the point of what good works are. When you talk about the Eighth Commandment, it's not just to not, you know, use your neighbor's name badly, but it's also to defend it. So when you guys were sending me texts saying, hey, um, I just got this text from you, um, th- thank you. That's you guys were fulfilling the eighth commandment by defending my my name to let me know that this was going on to uh, speak up and say that you know to in fact report this if you know and you saw the police report too they were saying if you were scammed to let them know um, and, and things like that that's all about defending the eighth commandment and defending our name because think about how much of our world functions just because of someone's reputation or their name. Uh, you know, if you, have you seen the approval rating of the, the Congress and the President of the United States, right? It's just been plummeting. Uh, I saw a graph the, the last week um, that showed since uh, was a, I, Eisenhower, and it showed like the, the confidence in the government, right? That's the reputation and things like that. And people don't trust when things happen. You know, part of the reason why we're kind of in the crisis we are is because people don't trust. People, you know, there's no good name out there. Uh, so when we see these things happening, uh, right, we can remember the eighth commandment uh, with these things as well. So yeah, you know, this is just a couple of the, the thoughts that kind of came to my mind. Um, and, and like I said, it, it ultimately it made me realize too. You get back to idolatry and, and things like that because all the commandments. You know, you talk about commandments. You know, two, five, eight, ten, whatever. Uh, they all relate back to the first commandment. This is kind of Luther's kind of. It, it's maybe not his. He's probably got from somewhere too. But kind of his insight into the commandments as he's looking through them is that they all are expression of the first commandment. This is why the summary of the law is love the Lord your God and your neighbor as yourself because all these things kind of flow together into the first commandment. So I always do this with confirmation class, right? If you could keep the first commandment, you could keep all the rest of them. So it tells you when lying happens, when coveting happens, when adultery happens, when murder happens, when dis- uh, you know not listening to authority or not honoring your parents or not remembering the Sabbath day or not keeping God's name holy and, and things like that. These are all related to the first commandment that we have an idol, uh, that we're not in sync with how God has made the world. And it hurts people, right? This, you know, someone tried to hurt other people by stealing what was theirs, Um yeah, so you know a lot of these thoughts go into it. So you know, what do you do? How do we respond as Christians um, when you go into the Lord's Prayer? 
Uh, Luther syncs the petitions of the Lord's Prayer with the commandments. Uh, so, you know, daily bread has to do with everything that has to do with the support and needs of the body. And he kind of lists all these things out. Uh, and part of that is good reputation. So you pray to God that your name would be kept safe. Um, and how does God answer that prayer as well? He gives parishioners who will text me and say, hey, this happened, it allows, which allows me to give announcements and, and heads up on things like this. Uh, um, you know, God works through means. He works through his creation to accomplish things, um, that he protects our reputation, that we defend on him. You go through the Psalms. If you read a lot of the Psalms, it's people trying to attack David's good name or his life. And David will always ask God. He, he won't try to arm himself. He won't try to defend his name. But he allows God to step forward because God has put his name on David. And so God always petitions the Lord saying, hey, um, if this is your ta- if this is your mission, then defend it um, to provide for me. Um, you know, this is, happens when David is heading out of town when his son Absalom has rebelled. And on, and the way David's out of town, there's a man, Shemi, I think is his name. Uh, and he curses David. And, you know, he pelts rocks at David as David is leaving town. He's mocking him. He's saying, ha, this is what you get, David, because of what you did to Saul and what you did to all these people and whatnot. You know, the Lord's returning sin upon you. And someone goes to David and says, hey, should we go quiet this guy, you know, kill him or something like that, whatever. And David says, no, no, maybe, maybe the Lord has sent him to say this to me. Um, and if it is the Lord's will to bring me back, the Lord will bring me back. You know, this is in, in the book of Second um, Samuel here, uh, when all this is happening. And of course, what happens is that David comes back into town, right? Because he's vindicated by God. Um, and his son Absalom and the rebellion is put down. And as he's on his way back to town, Shimei, the guy who cursed him, comes up to him and begs for his life and says, I am sorry, I, I, have, I have not done what was right. Um, and David responds by forgiving him. Uh, and he lets he lets him go, uh, so he doesn't demand of his life. Though, if you read First Kings, you can go read what happens there. Um, but in that time, David kind of shows a pre. He's a you know he's Jesus ahead of time, right? He's a um, he represents he's the Messiah ahead of time, uh, and he uh, gives to Shemi that forgiveness, and just like Jesus does when he you know forgives us. Uh, so when I come to this, you know, for that, whoever the scammer ever watches this, right, may God grant you repentance of the forgiveness of your sins so that I may enjoy and we may re- if, revel in that forgiveness that we have with one another. Uh, so we don't have to worry about any fireballs or anything like that. Uh, but yeah, so there's some thoughts that kind of relate to, you know, fraud and things like that, that we'd ask God would defend our good name. Uh, and then part of our task then is you know, we can become an answer to that prayer in our daily life, in our discussions. So if you're with a group of people and something is brought up about someone, what you say is, hey, that person isn't here to speak up for themselves. Maybe you shouldn't, right? You're almost their advocate. Uh, the, the old way, explain everything in the kindest way. The old saying would be put the best construction on it, uh, that, you try, right, that you say, hey, we don't know why they did this or why they said that or what was going on there. Even if what they did was true, what if it was true, right? It's not my task to do that. Um, with Luther in the large catechism, he goes about and says, have you talked to the judge? Have you talked to the people who are responsible for weighing judgment? And, he said, and if someone comes, well, I couldn't prove it publicly, even if it is true. Um, he says, then they should quiet up because they're taking someone's good name and, and running it through the, through the dirt. Uh, which is another side thing. If you haven't read Luther's large catechism, if you're you know talking about if you've gone through the small catechism and things like that, get into the large catechisms. Luther extrapolates these points so well. Um, he's brilliant. He's he's done so much reflection and digging into God's word that this stuff just springs to life on the page for him, uh, and you see it in his writings. Uh, so get, dig into the large catechism. That's actually what I did as I prepared for today. I read through the large uh, catechism on the eighth commandment and just kind of you know, plugged myself into my like, oh yeah yeah there you see how this is going. Uh, so a lot of good thoughts with that. Um, but then there's another, there's another topic here that's been on my mind. So you got fraud part one, here's part two, you get two ramblings for the price of one today. Um, one of the things that's kind of stuck out to me, um, in the life of the church, uh, and dealing with some of the things as as a pastor, uh, even in my own life as, as a, in, in the faith is, uh, we, we tend to romanticize, um, and make nostalgic certain parts, especially of our faith, of, of our doctrine, and, or turning it into a feeling or something like that. And I've seen this lately with talking about Jesus as Lord. Um, often when I, when, I, when I hear that, and sometimes when I've even said it, 
um, what I've often caught is that we've talked about the Lord, our Lord, the Lord, as if being Lord is kind of like a safety net. Um, it's a good cushy, lovey thing, lovey-dovey thing. Um, and, and being Lord, when we, and this is a confession of the early church, right? Go read uh, Acts chapter 2, uh, when Peter says, uh, This Jesus whom you've crucified, God has made both Lord and Christ. Uh, Philippians chapter 2, Every knee will bow and confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. When Paul opens up every every letter, he says, Greetings by God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, when we talk about this, um, Lord is not some like, oh, he's here to give lots of hugs and lots of smiles and things like that. Um, no, it's something much, being a Lord is not just a political term, it's, you know, kind of a, a military term. It's a, a, a Lord, I'm, which means I'm a servant. Uh, for all of us as Christians, you know, kind of a slave imagery. I'm slave to Christ. And this is what Paul does in Galatians. I am Christ's slave. Um, that his will kind of directs things. But we pray this in the Lord's Prayer. Thy will be done. Only a person who is a servant can ask for someone else's will to be done upon them. Uh, and we get this and we talk about our life of faith when it comes to how the Lord, the Lord, has designed life. Um, too often it's... I think I we, we try to take the initiative that I can live the way I want and then Jesus kind of smiles and waves at us as if he, he likes this kind of stuff. Um, whether it be how we organize ourselves, whether it be how we live our daily life, it always comes under the auspices of him as Lord, that he's the one that directs it. Uh, this is what gives the Christians in the early church such confidence, right? To be thrown to the lions, uh, to go before the emperor and say, do your worst, man. You're going to feed me to the lions. Get it over with. Uh, come on. Um, you know, like, who cares? Because I, I have a Lord who is above you, um, who is seated at the right hand, the throne of God, right? It's he, he calls the shots. When we talk about being Lord, it's Jesus is the one that calls the shots. Um, he's the one that says, do this and it will be done, right? This is what he comes to his disciples and says, all authority on heaven and earth has been given to me, right? Jesus is saying, I run this. This is my show. Um, and here's what I want you to do. So he kind of cues us in as the church. You know, we've been cued into what God wants done. And so what is his will? Go and make disciples of all nations. How do you do this? Well, you baptize them and you teach them uh, to observe everything that I have commanded. Um, you know, Paul, when he talks about a lot of times the Christian life, when he'll, he'll use the lordship of Jesus as kind of like, this is why, because uh, Jesus is Lord. Uh, but then he'll say to keep in step. You know, this is kind of a military term. You keep in marching step with one another. I always love videos of uh, our, if they're another country's army when they're in step with one another, they're doing the marching and then woo, it's like the same in sync with one another. Uh, when Paul says keep in step with the spirit, you know, this is kind of what it, it means that you're walking as Jesus walks. You're walking as the church has been called to walk. It's not your own walk, right? Um, our faith is not an individual matter. It's uh, we are grouped together as the church to, to do this. Um, that I, 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 I don't get to call the shots. I don't get to say, this is what I think should happen. Uh, this is what I think, um, we should do. This is how my life should live. Um, oh, I, you know, I, I'm not happy with being married, so I'll just get divorced or I'm not happy with this church or this congregation. So I'm going to go here. Um, right. That's almost, uh, that's not, it's not in our prerogative to do, um, or be right. We're, we're kind of where God has put us. Um, and think about this, this relates to vocation, your calling in your life. What has God given you to do? Uh, a lot of it that God gives to do, I didn't get to say, right? I didn't get to say whether I was going to be born or not. I didn't get to say whether Jesus was going to become my Lord. I know people, and people do this, uh, accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, like Jesus is waiting for you to accept him. Um, Lords don't do that. Lords don't bother waiting for you to come to them. They kind of force themselves on you. Um, this is what makes him Lord is he does this. Um, how we, what, what a pathetic Lord that he has to make you wait to come to him. Um, he knocks down doors and grabs you. That's how he works. Um, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. He just does it. Uh, thanks be to God. Cause if it was up to me, I wouldn't do it. Right. How dare we would just let this be up to chance, right? Tell our kids, I'll let you decide. Um, oh, wow. that's spiritual abuse, um, and things like that. So there's always kind of these thoughts to think about when you think about Jesus as Lord, and what that means, the implications of that are huge, but we often don't think about it. We, we like it as a good little cushy term, right? We love teddy bear Jesus. And we turn Lord as kind of a, a way of making Jesus 
palatable. I guess if I want to put it that way. Yeah, I'll put it that way. We try to make Jesus palatable, um, especially to modern senses. And uh, that's, a, that's not what Jesus does. Um, he's our good Lord who has rescued us from sin and death and brings us to himself. And the second article of the creed that we can do in our catechism, that I may be his own and live under him in his kingdom and serve him in everlasting righteousness, innocence, and blessedness. Uh, so you do this in your vocations. See, I'm rabbit hole in here. This is what rambling does. And uh, you do this. And I look at myself. I didn't get to choose when I was born, who I was born to, if I got a sibling or not. I didn't get a say in this. I just, God gave it. Yeah, that's what he does. He just gives. Um, so I have a task to do. What are my tasks? Well, I'm a man. Um, I'm a creature of God. You know, there's a couple tasks that God has given me to do. There's a, a way to live that life as, as a man, as a woman. And God calls differently. They're, they're different, equal tasks, but God gives each of us different things to do. Um, as a hu- you know, I'm a husband, so there's a task when it comes to being a husband. Uh, if you're a single person, right, there's a task of being a single person. Um, and these relate to the Ten Commandments. Uh, in our daily life that God, and then you can see where the sin comes up and you see where God gives his forgiveness for all this stuff too. They're real sins that need real forgiveness from a real savior who's a real Lord. Um, all this good stuff. Uh, you know, there's a task. I'm a pastor. Uh, there's a task I have to be, I have to do. I, there's a task as a father. Um, think about that. You know, we always try to force father, parenthood and things like that, but usually it's just something that God gives. Uh, God must give the gift. Uh, and he does. Um, yeah, so, you know, you think about all this stuff, this kind of relates to the lordship of Jesus. It relates to our life before him. You know, we're in the stage of the church. We're talking about the end, uh, this upcoming week for us, it's week number three of Advent, but it's also the last Sunday in the church year, uh, kind of coming together and you get the final judgment, you know, set, you know the judge separates the sheep and the goats. That's the text for this upcoming week. And he kind of declares unto them what he sees and he calls the shots, right? That's what the judge does. And what is interesting about that text, that always something that catches you off guard, is that both the sheep and the goats say, where? I, I didn't see this. In fact, I thought I did see this and I, I didn't. And you know, that's kind of the, the shock value of this all is that he decides. Um, he gets to make the choice. So that all kind of plays in together uh, with all of this as well. Um, there you go. I think that's enough rambling for today. I got on a little bit later. I was in a meeting, uh, but got on here as well. May God bless you and keep you. Um, I'll give you a, a, we'll say a prayer here and I'll give you a blessing and we'll go about our day. So I hope you enjoyed that. Some, some thoughts about fraud, um, some thoughts about the Lordship of Jesus, the church, um, our task, our mission, making disciples, you know, that doesn't fit into how the world fits. And that's another thing, in the last ramble, uh, the Lordship of Jesus uh, it doesn't look like the lordship of the world, right? The lordship of the, the world is uh, plays out a lot differently than how Jesus is Lord. Uh, he reigns through his forgiveness and his new life. Um, with him, there is abundant mercy because he is your Lord. So there you go. There's some thoughts. Um, and he's made himself, your, and that's the good news too. He's made himself your Lord. Um, and he does this. How he's baptized you. Yeah, you come up to the table. He feeds you. Right? You confess your sins. He forgives you. He gives you his word, um, his promises that are made sure each morning uh, of the new creation that is coming and you will be included on that day. So thanks be to God when God will be all in all. That will be our 1 Corinthians 15 text this Sunday. So ready yourselves for that. So let's say a prayer. Let's not tally or dally anymore. Let's say our prayer. Dear Father in heaven, we give thanks for your son, Jesus Christ. We ask that you would continue to protect us from all evil, protect our life, protect our reputation and our good names. Uh, continue to supply us with your spirit, that we may call upon you as Lord, knowing that no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Lord, we ask that you be with us as your church, as your people, as we work, make our way through these days, uh, that you be with us in our sickness, in our trials, in our temptations, that we would continue to call upon you, you who are our Lord. You have made us your Lord, Father. You have made us your Lord through your Son, Jesus Christ. And we ask that you would keep us in the faith, that you continue to supply us with all that we need to support this body and life, and that we be generous in that too, that others may see that love that shines through us. We ask this through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who has taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. God's peace to you, Christ Lutheran. Hopefully you enjoyed the ramblings. If you got any thoughts or questions, feel free to reach out to me. If you have any ideas, any topics that you'd like me to ramble on, let me know, and I'll be glad to do some of that as well. Uh, but God's peace to you. Next week is Thanksgiving. I'll be here next week as well for another rambling, and we'll look forward to everything that God continues to give and do through his son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Go in peace.